I, uh, I've got a gate to make here, but I've got to put some posts in first. I've got an STS Plus drill, but I've killed a couple of them over the years. So I bought myself a new toy. Weighs a ton. It might be a bit overkill for this, but I've got some other jobs that it'll do. But hopefully it'll make light work of getting this concrete out. We'll see. Right, this thing's massive. Weighs an absolute ton. It's... Don't know how tall it is, but I'll measure it. But it comes well above my waist and I'm six foot two. It is approximately like it is forty one inch, a metre fifty long with the chisel. Oh, that is a monster. It's going to be awkward, I think, getting in. It might be a bit too big for this, but swapping over chisels is fairly easy. Just lift and turn this knob. It slides out. I put the point on, which has got me down quite well, but it's, it's a big, heavy machine, killing my back. So just to wheedle out the rocks that it's broken up, I've got my little one out, but if anything thicker turns up, I'll be going back to that. Or maybe break it up inside with that and then fish the bits out with a smaller one. This has already been broken up by the big one, the point of the big one. Uh, this post is a prime example of what I was talking about in my fencing video. It always rots off at ground level. And then you end up with a stump that's probably a treated post, but it looks that, like looks as good as the newest. Looks as good as the day that it went in. I'm glad I've got both of those hammer drills. Small one's good for just getting in. But occasionally I've come across big lumps that I can just blast out with that nails. I can blast out with that big, big monster. 
that posting won't go far, was it? Alright, that'll do for that. It is a bit OTT for this. It's a bit big. But I'm glad I've got it. I've gone down about 16 inch, 400mm. I'm glad I had a little one. And post hole diggers and long spike means I can get right down to the bottom. Right, they're stood in place. I put these two on first, I marked a pencil line on both of them, put them together, marked them together, so I know it's parallel. Then got them plumb, put this brace on, and then there's a brace on either side to make them plumb that way. Glad I had that big breaker, because that side was full of hard rocks, concrete, these red bricks, some of these red bricks are solid, like iron. The little, the little, the little Dewalt one didn't want to go through it. But they're in. I've got a plaster mixer, an electric mixer. So I'll get some concrete in again, six to one. I'll be just mixing a bag or two at a time. Don't need a lot. And then leave them for maybe a week. I've got a kitchen to fit inside, doors to hang. I'll come back to this and then I've got to make a gate that has like a slope, panels on the bottom, and then uh, like a jailhouse, you know, bars, spindles on the top half. I'm just mixing a bag at a time. This is what they call ballast. It's stones, 20 mil stones and sand. And then you want a six to one mix, so a bag of sand, and one sixth of a bag of cement. I'm going to make this wet enough to pour. I've already mixed one and I know that it took a, a full bag. So I'm going to mix a full bag again. I might not need that whole bag but better to have just a little bit too much. You need a pokey stick to push it into all the corners and give it a wriggle and it'll settle down. Right then ideally you'd leave that for half an hour, maybe an hour, and you'll be able to float it off a little bit better without it wobbling around so much. But I'm going home so I'll be at a I'll be able to rub it down a little bit tomorrow, take these braces off tomorrow probably, so that people can get in and out of the garden without having to step through. But that's it for now. Gates in a week or two, depends when I get done with all the other stuff inside.